Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'm going to play another training game. I wanted to play a high rated opponent, but uh, a subscriber has been challenging me uh, a few times now and now again, and he also wrote a message that he would really like to play. I'm going to accept this challenge uh, and play him, but I would just like to say, please, if, if I'm uh, online on Leeches and you challenge me, and I decline your challenge, please don't challenge me for the second time. I, I really have a reason for declining, and I don't mean to be rude, but if I'm trying to solve tactics or if I'm preparing a lesson, if I'm analyzing something, I really don't want to have challenges coming in. I can understand that you challenge me, that's fine, but if, if I decline three times, then just give up, please. Once again, I don't mean to be rude, but please try to understand that I use this account to work and and to do all sorts of stuff. So I, I can't be playing games all the time. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Uh, we have uh, the Pirates defense and I went for the Lion's Jaw, the Black Lion. Uh, not the Black Lion, the Lion's Jaw. Variation, which I like with F3 instead of Knight to C3. My opponent is playing sensible moves, uh, he still didn't play g6, bishop g7. Uh, my plan usually is to go knight e2, g4, knight g3, when he fianchettos, and then after g4, knight g3, uh, I have ideas of g5, displacing the knight to h5 and then capturing, opening up his position. I would just like to respond to Zibit's comment uh, from yesterday's video, sorry for not being able to do that. In the comment section about arrows, uh, some of you have asked me to draw arrows when calculating. I have been trying to do that, but as Zibit said, I probably should stop because uh, that could ruin my calculation skills. So, sorry if you like the arrows, I'm going to try to stop doing that to make sure I use only my own visualization. Uh, I do feel that the arrows help, but during, during a real game, uh, I'm not allowed to do that. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, one more thing I would like to mention. Today I didn't manage to record the theoretical video uh, because I had uh, some urgent th things to do in the morning and then also after that. So I'm going to continue the, the Nimzo series tomorrow and I'm also going to play two training games uh, in the Nimzo. Tomorrow, tomorrow the same-ish or Kmoch variation is on the repertoire with F3. And I'm going to play uh, a game in the F3 Nimtso uh, against a subscriber. And also in the afternoon I have a training game in the F3 Nimtso against my coach Mate, uh, who plays the F3 position uh, against the Nimtso all the time. In fact, uh, two days ago he's been preparing that against the Grandmaster in the Slovenian league and he drew. So I'm going to have the black side of that against an opponent who is extremely well prepared. I don't know why I didn't move, so I'm just, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so it's going to be really fun and Mate also uh, will analyze the game afterwards. We are going to be playing in our chess club uh, and after the game we are going to analyze the, the position. So. Uh, I would like to say that if you don't know the F3 uh, Nimzo, it's going to be really fun. And uh, Mate, uh, I'm going to ask him to analyze the whole game, to be honest, because he knows the position much better than I do. And we will see how the game goes. I'm not expecting to survive against him because he, well, if he can draw a Grandmaster in the variation, then he can certainly crush me. Well, okay, one thing I would like to say about this position now, and let's get into the game. Uh, my light squared bishop, which usually stays on f1 for the remainder of the game, is my worst piece in this f3, g4, e4 setup. That's why I'm really happy to get rid of it. I also don't see a purpose for his rook uh, coming to a6. Furthermore, uh, in any position where he places his knight on e5 and my f3 pawn is weak when my queen is on d2, uh, I'm very happy not to have my bishop actually because bishop e2 when I play that to defend, or bishop g2, blocks my idea of playing, I'm drawing the arrows again, now I got used to it, of playing h4, h5, and putting my queen on h2, and checkmating him. Check, checkmating him. So, uh, I'm kind of happy to see this on the board, because I'm not sure where his rook goes. Now, I could play queen e2, I'm not afraid of b3, that's just a, 
a pawn sacrifice. If I go knight c4, he's going to play d5. Then I don't have e5. If he plays bishop g7, uh, I'm just going to play g5. In fact, I may play g5 immediately, forcing his knight to, to g8. I don't know if I should gain a tempo on the rook first, because I kind of like my queen on e2 better than on d1. Because as I said, my idea is to uh, play h4, queen h2. So I'm going to play this first, queen e2, forcing his rook to move. Uh, he can't really defend it with the queen, because I then have uh, d5 drawing arrows again. And my next move, since his knight doesn't have a good square to go to, is going to be g5. If after g5 he plays knight h5, I just take it and open the position up completely. Let me just turn on the volume on my phone. Sorry about this, sorry about this, sorry about this. Uh, sometimes I forget to do that. Okay, uh, his rook is under attack, also rook b6 uh, runs into d5, and this this is actually a setup Mate taught me, and I used it to defeat a Fide Master in the Croatian Cup. That's my main weapon against the Pirates now. I used to play the Kolmov, or the Kolmov uh, system a lot, and uh, I kind of, well, I had great success with it. Uh, I scored two and a half out of three. I only drew one 2150 uh, player in the Croatian League, so I was scoring really well with that. By, but in my experience, the Kolmov is uh, less risky than this, but people know it better, and almost nobody knows this. Basically, if, if this idea with uh, G, knight e2, g4, knight g3 happens, white's main deficit is the bishop on f1. Now that I got rid of that bishop, my position, the engine is going to say it's equal, I, I'm sure, or that black is slightly better because the engine hates this idea with f3. But uh, in my opinion, white is just overwhelmingly better. g5, there's there's nothing he can do. Knight h5 loses. Uh, knight g8 is ridiculous because of h4, h5. Both of our kings are stuck in the center, but mine is obviously able to castle queenside here. Yeah, this just isn't good. This is such a bad position for, for black that it's resignable. This king is too unsafe. My knight is coming in. Uh, my queen is taking here. My knight is going f3, h4, uh, and then coming into uh, f5. So basically, black is lost here. None of his ideas with bishop g7 work because I simply play c3. My king is never too unsafe. Uh, he said, LOL, didn't notice you are knight. Well, uh, that's the point of knight g3, g4. Uh, yeah, if this is a short game, I'm going to play another one, because I didn't record uh, the theoretical variation. Okay, uh, how does he defend now? Uh, I don't think he defends this position. I, I'm just going to play queen g4 and take the pawn. I don't see any any problem with that. He could go queen b6, but I'm not sure I'm worried about that. Uh, I'm not sure I want to win the pawn immediately, to be honest. Uh, e5 com comes to mind as a really strong move here. Uh, then if he plays d5, I'm going to play f5. And also if he takes... Well, I'm not sure I want to open up the position just yet. I always have uh, time to open it up later. So I'm just going to play sensible moves. Let's just see about h5. Is h5 a threat? Or is h6 a threat? Queen g4, h6. Queen takes h4, h takes g5, queen takes g5. He would then have the move e5, which I'm not too happy to see on the board. It would sort of shut down my attacking possibilities, and I also wouldn't be able to trade the queens off. Uh, so I'm kind of worried about h6 here. Although after h6, I don't have to take the pawn. So, candidate moves. Start, cal start calculating. 
uh, e5 is a move here. If he takes, I take with the f-pawn, opening up the f-file, playing rook f1. If he pushes, uh, I play f5, and I'm going to follow that up with f6. Uh, other candidate moves knight f3, just taking the h-pawn with the knight, and following it up with my normal plan of knight h4, knight f5, kind of like that as well. So knight f3 is my knight necessary on the queen side, I don't think it is to be honest, and also my knight is then defending d4, and my knight is supporting e5, and my knight can take on h4. So knight f3, h6, knight h4, hg5, knight f5, uh, g f4, bishop f4, his rook's file is open now, but I have a knight on f5, uh, and how do I open up the e file? Okay, that's that's a candidate. Knight f3 is a candidate move. Although I prefer queen g4. So queen g4, h6. Ah, uh, h6 doesn't work. I just play g6. Yeah, weak calculation from me. Queen g4 is good. h6, g6. h5, I take on h4. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. I missed I missed the resource once again. If you've seen my yesterday's game where I hung my bishop, then you will know that I'm prone to uh, missing resources. Yeah, by the way, uh, I'm going to start streaming these live games. Uh, I want your opinion on this. Uh, YouTube obviously offers uh, streaming. I've never used it no idea how to use it. Once I've accidentally started the stream and for some reason YouTube recorded it like a video, or I, I don't know, I didn't do anything, I didn't want to start streaming. So I'm kind of uh, trying to decide whether I should start st streaming on YouTube or on Twitch. I've never used Twitch either, I've never been on Twitch, I have no idea how to use it. And I want your opinion and your advice. Uh, if I decide to stream training games instead of record them. Would be would that be better for you than if I just uh, play them and record? And second question: If I uh, wait, is this checkmate? I think this is a mate in one. Just queen h5. Uh, yeah, it's checkmate. I'm going to allow him a ta take back. So. Where was I? Yeah, uh, if I play training games, do you prefer uh, if I stream them instead of recording? And if I streamed training games, would you prefer the stream to be on YouTube or on Twitch? And please, if you can, be specific as to why uh, you want one or the other. Because I have no idea what, uh, what each is about and what the advantages are. Okay, uh, my position here is uh, overwhelmingly better. Of course, I don't want to allow his knight to f6, so I'm never going to take on f6. Uh, let's think uh, wisely now. Uh, well, e5 is a move now, because I have two targets. When I play e5, he cannot push both pawns. If I play e5 and he takes on g5, I'm going to take with the pawn. If he then plays d5, uh, I've opened my knight to come from f3 into e5. So my ultimate goal here is to get my knight into e5. To do that, uh, I should consider playing, playing the move e5 now. Uh, e5, I like e5. I don't see a problem with that. It's time to open up some lines because my my king is very safe on e1. I can castle either side. His king is ridiculously unsafe. If he ever plays rook g8, I just take on h5 checkmate. Uh, if he allows e6, then he, his position is just busted. Uh, yeah. So this is... This should be game over. Uh, I'm going to take... I'm not worried to lose a pawn here, obviously, I just don't care. Uh, uh, so, okay, uh, now I'm going to castle short. I really like this position. So if I castle short, does he have e6 there? Uh, he cannot take on, on d4 because I attack his rook. Once again, if he moves his rook, I, I have queen h5. If I castle, does he have e6? I'm kind of worried about that. So do I need to stop e6 in any way. Do I want to threaten 
a checkmate. This seems like a fun option. Queen e4, threatening queen g6. Then if he plays rook g8, what do I do then? Then I can castle, and my pawn isn't hanging. Oh, his king is just ridiculous. Uh, although, he could play e6 after queen e4. Am I really going to castle kingside? I think I am. So either queen e4 or castles kingside. If I play queen e4, uh, he plays e6, and then queen g6 check, king d7, then I have a check, uh, d takes e5 check, no, it's that's not a check. Uh, okay, but queen e4, rook g8 is the critical line. Castles kingside is too unsafe, so in that case I might as well castle queen side. So queen e4 or castles? I'm not sure. Maybe I should just play rook f1. Uh, rook f1, e6, then I have queen e4. So rook f1 seems slightly more sensible. Yeah, rook f1 instead of castling seems better. I don't want to play queen e4 just forcing his rook uh, into g8. He could try e6 now, uh, but my move is then just going to be knight e4, threatening knight f6. And as I said, I always have uh, the option of castling uh, queen side. So yeah, you can see what kind of crazy games uh, the f3 uh, system against the Pirates can lead to. Uh, white is uh, crushing black this game. Maybe the engine has some hidden resource and the engine is going to say it's equal or better for black. I, I can never tell. But if I had to bet, I would say white is plus three or four here. In fact, in fact, uh, yeah, I'm going to claim that white is plus three here. I, I'm going to check with an engine later. So this is Move 19 after rook f1, I, I think white is like plus 3. Not sure what he does. I'm really not sure what he does here. Hmm. Well, he's threatening to, to take, but he's not really threatening to take, because e takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop d4, queen d4, still attacking the rook, rook g8. I really want the e-file to open up, obviously. Uh, I should just continue with knight somewhere, or with castles. Uh, and get my other pieces into play. How do I get rid of his rook there? I would love to play queen f2, but then just rook f8. Maybe I can go g6 and rook f7 g6 e6 uh, queen e4 hmm. or maybe i should just castle and not mess about castles am i afraid of b3 not really knight takes am i afraid of a4 not really uh, because then whichever pawn he pushes i'm able to close the position down so yeah, just castles, lining up my rook with his queen, I think should be perfectly fine. He really should move the knight away from uh, from d7, because 
because he's constantly getting gummated if he moves the rook from the h file. Okay, uh, happy to see this. His rook is hanging, so he has to do something about it. Now I do have a threat of entering uh, f7. And my... I mean, what do you say about this position? L look at the black king. I don't remember playing against a weaker king in, in a long time. And I got that for free. Uh, what uh, I think Yasser Seiravan refers to this as a free attack. Uh, what's this move about? Uh, can I just play queen c4? He wants to take on g5. Queen c4, queen g5, queen f7, check, king d8. Uh, the knight cannot move because it's pinned to the queen. Mm. I'm not sure I'm that happy to give up my g5 pawn, to be honest. I think I'm going to play it safer. With something like queen e3, knight c4. I don't want the spin to happen. If queen takes g5, then my knight is locked down. And after queen e3, I'm threatening to take on e5 if he moves the knight. If he moves the queen, I have knight c4, threatening uh, e5 twice. If he plays rook f8, uh, then if he plays rook f8, I'm going to take that. If he takes with the king, I bring my other rook into f1. If he takes with the knight, I take on e5 check. Okay, I'm not really happy to give up my g5 pawn, so I'm just going to defend it first. And after I play knight c3, or or even better, why am I uh, knight c4? Why am I playing knight c4? I'm going to play knight e4, defending g5 and threatening knight f6, uh, winning. Desperately trying to trade the queens off, not going to happen. Definitely not going to happen. I'm not trading the queens off. No way. Queen e4. Uh, he has knight c5, but just queen g6 check. Oh, can he castle there? I'm an idiot. He can castle. Ugh. Not Well, not really. But... I allowed him to castle, which is absurd. Why? I do have a passed pawn, which is protected. It's much better than his e5 pawn, but I shouldn't have allowed this. Now I have knight c4 tempo on the queen after castles. Uh, the queen has to go... Where does the queen go? Because I have knight d6 check. If castles knight c4, he could consider knight c5, attacking my queen. Uh, but then I can just take on e5. I'm sure. Yeah, this just wins the exchange. So knight c4, knight d6 is going to win the exchange. He should have castled. I mean, did he move his king? I can't remember. I don't think he moved his king. No. No, no, no. He should have castled long. I don't know why he did this. Uh... I don't see an attack coming up. If he'd castled, then knight c4 uh, is much better for white, but... I mean, just look at this. Th this is beautiful. This is just beautiful. I might not even play knight d6. I might just play queen g6 check and... Oh, this is wonderful. Queen g6 check, king e7, rook takes d7, king takes d7, uh, queen g7 check, king d6 or something, then rook d1 check, king c5, yeah, he's getting away. And also when he moves his queen, he might move it to c7, just defending the knight. Although... Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the thing is, he's running into problems here. If he plays queen c7, then I have queen g6 check, king d8, and I have queen 
uh, f6 check because the knight is pinned and his king is getting mated because I win the rook. So queen c7 is not a good move. Also queen b7 loses the queen. Also queen b5 loses the queen. Queen a6 uh, loses just the exchange, but I might still play queen g6 check, king d8, queen f6 check, king c7, queen d6 check, and he loses the knight. Yeah, it, I'm not going to take the exchange, I'm either going to checkmate him, win the h8 rook, or win the d7 knight. Knight c5 is probably his best attempt, but that's just a mate in two. Knight c5, queen e5, knight e6, queen e6, checkmate. Yeah, his his position is... Uh, okay, that's, uh, that's just checkmate. So, queen g6 check, king d8, queen c6 check, wins the rook. Yeah. Yep. If he goes to e7, then checkmate. Yeah. He, he well, he didn't have a good move, but queen c7 is the worst move. Yeah. Well, do I take the rook on h8 or do I play knight d6 check? Mm, I'm, I'm going to take the rook first. I don't want to complicate things here. Yeah, he resigned. Okay, uh, I'm going to play another game because I want to... Uh, this page is asking you to confirm that you want to leave. Stay on page. Uh, good game. Uh, why do we have to confirm anything? Okay. Okay, let's just look at move 19, rook f1. <laughs> I, I, I claim that I have a plus 3 advantage. Let's see. Okay, okay, no, it's more. Okay, plus five, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, now I I wanted to play another game, uh, but Bobby Fishy, who I just played, challenged me, challenged me. I wanted to try this, create a game, and then I wanted to play a 15 plus 15 game, which somebody pointed out that I can choose the rating of my opponents, and I wanted to play only people higher rated than me, so 2100 to wherever. Uh, and this. And now let's see if we can get a game this way. Uh, because the, the Bobby Fishy who I just played was lower rated than me and the game was short. Was short. I'm trying to get uh, a higher rated opponent to play the next game against me. If this takes long... Yeah, we got a game! 21-41. Okay. E4. I got I got a high rated game. Yes, he's playing on. Okay, uh, we are going to see a Tarash French. Okay, uh, knight d2. I'm going to play my queen g4 idea because I've worked on it some more. Yes, and I will get to do it. Uh, so c5, c3, knight c6, queen g4. And let's see what he does about that. <laughs> I'm happy to, to play this move because firstly it will make him think. Uh, secondly, it's only been played five times in tournament games, uh, well, including mine, so six times. Uh, and thirdly, it's it's a weird move and an imprecise move, but it's not a bad move. Mate actually said, because he plays the Tarash against the French as well, he says uh, he's never seen it and he thinks it's interesting and he's going to play it himself. So this is one of my... Uh, favorite discoveries so far in opening prep. Uh, this move is really hard to meet. Now, the best move is h5, which is not that hard to see, but it's hard to see that you don't have anything after g5. So h5, queen f4, yeah, this is 
the common uh, move people play. This is what they usually play against me. Much better is takes, takes, knight b4, bishop f1, queen c7, uh, and then queen is forced back uh, to d1. But this is just fine, and I usually play knight e2 here. Knight e2, cd4, cd4. Uh, he can then play knight b4 still, but then I just play bishop b1, and he doesn't have the same pressure on my position. Now, knight e2 is not a risky move uh, in anticipation of h5, queen f4, g5, because my queen wants to go to e3 or to f3. Uh, better to go to e3. Now, the problem with this position, uh, when he takes, takes knight b4, bishop f1, is that queen c6 or queen c7 uh, allow him to play knight c2 check, and my queen is unable to return to d1. But in that case, after knight b4, bishop f1, queen c6 or c7, I'm just going to castle, and after knight, uh, knight c2, I'm just going to give up my light squared bishop. And then still, I, I have a lot of pressure on his position. As you are going to see, uh, he doesn't have this check here, which is good. My knight is still on d2. That's one advantage of not having transferred my knight to f3. The third thing is, if any knight b4, bishop here, if he doesn't play queen c7 or queen c6, I'm going to play a3, chase his knight away. If I had a move here, uh, it would be really hard to decide between castling and the a3. I think I would choose a3. Because that stops bishop b4, knight b4, and all sorts of other ideas. But, but, uh, a3 is risky because it allows knight a5, knight c4. But for now, c4 is very well defended, and b3 is always an option while I have my knight on d2. So, in this position, I want to play a3, I want to castle, and I already have a time advantage. Uh, as you can see, queen g4 is a tricky move to meet, and he does find the best move. Okay, queen f4. I obviously have to keep defending this. As I said, h5 was much better on the previous move. He sort of wants his queen to stay on d8 uh, or to go to c7. Uh, this combination on move, of moves where he plays queen b6, cd, cd, and then h5 is not as good. Uh, okay, so a3 or castles, that's the big decision here. Can he play f6 now? Hmm. Well, a3 is no longer as good because he's moved his bishop, so playing bishop b4 wouldn't make that much sense. But a3 stops uh, knight b4 chasing my bishop away. On the other hand, if I castle, I will feel much safer in this position. But then again, if I don't castle, what's his threat? Is he going to castle? I doubt it. Is he going to play g5? So what? Queen e3. Is he going to play f6? Uh, a3, f6, I can just... a3, f6, I will take. And once he takes with the knight... Uh, hmm. a3, f6. I don't want to castle because of f6 takes, g takes, which seems risky, but... Oh yeah, he doesn't have f6. I still have bishop here. So a3, if he plays f6, then bishop check. And if I castle, f6, bishop check. But if I castle and he plays knight b4, uh, bishop b1, queen c7, uh, then I have no way to protect the c2 square. So I'm just going to play a3 first. I think a3 makes more sense because f6 is not uh, such a good option here. Also f5, I'm just going to take Ampassan and whatever he captures with, I still have bishop g6 check. And even after g5, I have bishop g6 check. So I think a3 was more precise here. a3 actually cost me the game. Uh, you can find it, road to gm, round 6 of split open. I think it was game 95 or 9, no. 90 something, 97 maybe, uh, in which 
my opponent uh, crushed me because I forgot to play one move. We played a very theoretical line and this, well, theoretical is a stupid word to say uh, when there's only five games, but he played one of the best continuations and I simply forgot to in insert the move A3. I played instantly, had a huge advantage on the clock and forgot to play A3, chasing his knight away from B4. Okay, now castling makes a lot of sense. I'm really not afraid of his attack. I want to get my king uh, to safety. G5 doesn't scare me. H4 doesn't scare me. Uh, there's uh, H4, G5. There's a plan with rook G8. Uh, rook G8, G5. Uh, rook G8, G4, bishop G5. Which is kind of scary. But... I'm not sure I'm afraid of that, to be honest. Because always, well, in, in mainline positions after h5, queen f4, yeah, he's playing it. Now, after g4, bishop g5, the usual plan is to go knight f3. Although in this position, I'm losing my d4 then, d4 pawn then, and I don't like that. So, how about b3, g4, bishop b2, bishop g5, knight f4. And that way my d4 pawn is defended and I have a great knight on f4 and I can follow that up with uh, g3. So this is the usual plan, uh, rook g8, g4, bishop g5. And it's always met uh, either by uh, either by f4. So I can also consider so I can also consider g4, uh, f4, and that would open up some lines, so I don't want to do that. So b3, b3, g4, bishop b2, bishop g5, knight f4. How does he increase the pressure on the knight? I don't think he does. Because I don't want to play... Uh, I don't want to play the move f4 because he then has knight takes e5 and pawn takes e5 loses the queen, uh, queen takes e5 loses the queen. So I think I'm going to go for this plan of b3, bishop b2. So now g4, bishop b2, bishop g5, knight f4. I need to have my d-pawn protected. <clears throat> Maybe b3 is too slow and perhaps in unnecessary, but I felt like I, well, I felt like that's a good move. And once I play the move g3 after knight f4, uh, I don't have too many issues. I do give him a target for h4, but yeah, he goes for the plan goes for the best plan. So I'm just going to continue doing what I wanted to do. Because this is common. Knight f4 is common in, in queen g4 lines. It might seem absurd, but it's, it's a normal move. And these lines with queen g4 can, can be fairly tricky. And now we basically have uh, somewhat of a thematic position after uh, h5 g5 he did find one of the best continuations i guess that's why he's 2100 uh, but I, I i know for a fact that these positions are fine for white i'm not sure about the plan with b3 bishop b2 although i am stopping knight a5 knight c4 so i'm happy uh, he still has uh, a horrendous bishop on c8, and now after bishop b2, I have the c file to play with, so I'm I'm not really worried about this position. As long as I don't move my f pawn, I should be fine. And I think knight f4 g3 simply stops his attack. I don't see, I don't see any attack coming here. Now also f6 just uh, loses because of e takes f6, whatever takes on f6, uh, I have queen e6 check. Or if he takes with the knight, then the bishop is defending e6, but 
Well, we will see. Uh, he has to decide what to do now. This is probably a fairly good move, uh, although I'm not sure I want to keep my light squared bishop here. So, just rook c8. He's then going to play either bishop to d7 or knight to g6. Uh, do I have a tactical blow here? So I'm looking at the move knight takes pawn now, because he removed the defender of the queen. Knight takes d5. If he takes my queen, I'm going to take his queen. Then he takes on d4. But I'm still attacking the rook. So knight d5, bishop e... No, what? I'm, I'm blind again. Knight takes d5, he just takes my knight. His bishop is defended by the rook. Yeah, I wanted to play this after the move knight g6. I'm sorry. My move does make sense. So if he plays knight g6, then knight d5. Knight g6, knight takes d5. His queen is hanging. He can then take on, on b3. That's true. And then I have two pieces hanging. The bishop on b2 and the knight on e5. Uh, on, on d5. But then I have knight c7 check. So I don't think knight g6 is a threat. Bishop d7 is also not such a scary move, so just rook c1. Uh, so if knight g6, I think I am going to take on d5, but I will double check everything once again. I could also grab uh, the knight first. Yeah, okay, yes, he's played it. Let's see. Knight takes d5. Queen takes b3. Knight c7 check. Knight takes d5, bishop takes e3, knight takes b6, bishop takes d4, bishop takes d4, knight takes d4, knight takes b8. If knight takes d5, e takes d5, queen takes uh, g5, his knight is pinned to the rook, knight e7, I can just retreat. So I'm going to do that. I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, I, I, knight g6, I think, is a very risky move. Maybe I should have considered taking the knight first. But I want to... Well, then he can take with the rook and his, his bishop is protected. So that's... If queen b3, once again, I'm, I'm just going to play knight uh, c7 check and then I'm going to take the bishop. Because if he plays king d8, queen g5 is check. If he plays king d7... Uh, well, that could be a problem, but he still has to capture one of my pieces. I'm happy about this move. I'm going to check it with an engine, but I think it works. Maybe there's some hidden caveat in this position, but I doubt it. Yeah, once again, let me know about... Uh, the streaming thing I asked. Would you like me to stream on Twitch or on YouTube? And uh, would you like to... Okay. Uh... Yeah, why am I so stupid? He takes my knight and my rook is hanging. Uh... But I can take his knight. So we have to take on c6 now. Uh, and then when he, once he recaptures, I'm going to take here. And then I'm still a pawn up. So I didn't, I didn't blunder. Uh, but I didn't see this. <laughs> I didn't see na rook takes c6 before I had moved. So yeah, my tactical shot worked. I'm a pawn up and I'm a deep pawn up. Does he have time to save his position by blocking my knight in? No, no, definitely not. Take and take and take and free. Free, free, free. He has to move his bishop away to one of these three squares. I have a check here, but I don't want to play it because then my knight doesn't have any squares. But I, ha but I have this move. And knight b6 to knight c4 and knight d6 should be winning for me. I'm winning this game because I found this move. And maybe, as I said, there is uh, a way to refute it. But I think knight takes d5 was a beautiful uh, uh, move. And I never get to play it against stronger opponents. So I'm really happy.
Ooh, my position is just wonderful. Uh, he is attacking my bishop. Okay, I can see that. So do I... What do I do? I don't want to take up the c4 square. Definitely not. Uh, I kind of don't want to play bishop e4 because so bishop e4 I have a problem with bishop uh, to b7 and then c5 is winning my bishop but it's also attacking his bishop so bishop e4 might be good bishop e4 there's no way to control both d3 and e2 unfortunately because the only square to do that from would be c4 but then after knight c6 well i could consider bishop c4 with the idea of knight c6 knight a4 and then knight c5 which also seems good so bishop c4 uh, stopping any knight infiltrations and also stopping knight d5 and then doesn't have this square doesn't have this square doesn't have this square and then if he attacks my knight knight c6 knight a4 knight c5 so i'm going to play that i like this i didn't plan to take up the c the c4 square from my knight but this plan of knight c6 knight a4 knight c5 is good enough yeah and i don't think he has any any attack it's just a pawn down it's and my bishops are obviously better than his bishops and i also want to mention one thing uh, i didn't want to allow his bishop to open up here that's why i wanted to stay on this diagonal so his bishop is now still ultra dead uh, so he is stopping my knight from coming into c6 into b6 or c7 so i basically have to take his knight which is unfortunate because then his bishop has this square Yeah, but I don't see another option. Well, he's going to have the bishop pair. But so what? I'm going to have the c5 square. If I were him... I would take with the c pawn but then again e takes opens up the bishop this way and gives him yeah okay so now i have to play knight b6 is this any better do i block his bishop this way so if i do this his bishop is still dead so knight c7 check the king moves and then knight b5 and then bishop a6 a4 bishop takes b5 a takes b5 how do i protect my pawn i don't think i do so maybe i should get my knight into c5 that seems like a much better option so knight b6 bishop a6 rook uh, d1 attacking the bishop the bishop moves back to either f4 g5 or h6 uh, and then i play knight a4 and then he has bishop e2 attacking my rook which is on d1 and i don't have rook c1 because the bishop on f4 g5 or h6 is controlling that but i'm looking forward to the move knight c5 and yeah i have to say his bishop is extremely good here my dark squared bishop is pretty dead so but i think i can always exchange my my dark squared bishop with bishop c1 so maybe i should do that here so bishop c1 uh, gives him the option to go to c3 now so that's not good uh, but no it doesn't be, uh, yeah it does so okay knight b6 don't waste time step on simple moves quickly he's going to play bishop a6 and i'm going to play rook d1 uh, bishop e2 immediately doesn't work he has to retreat the bishop first so bishop a6 rook d1 bishop g5 knight a4 bishop e2 uh, rook I don't know where uh, to e1 maybe but then bishop d2 i don't know i 
I don't like his bishop pair here, I have to say. I, I like my knight much better than any of his pieces. It would be great for him if he could trade off his dark squared bishop uh, for my knight. Then we would have an opposite colored bishop ending, which is pretty equal, but... I don't know what he is waiting for. Yeah, bishop a6, rook d1, moves the bishop to g5, and I play knight a4. It's important to, to, to retreat the rook with tempo from f1, because I need time for knight a4, knight c5, and it's crucial that I get my knight to c5, because I have to defend b3. Because when he moves his rook to b8, then my, my b3 pawn is pretty loose. Although then uh, he could try something like bishop e2. He'd probably have to play here and then bishop d3 attacks my rook. If he gets his bishop to c2, my, my b3 pawn could hang. So let's just proceed without uh, any hesitation. Get my knight into c5. If I can, I would love to play the move bishop c1. There's no move I would rather like to play now that his bishop is on the long diagonal. Uh, I want to get my bishop active. Then he's probably going to play bishop e7, but uh, attacking my a3 pawn. But still, my bishop is better on c1 than on uh, than on b2. It's just horrible on b2 at the moment. And I might also consider this trade. So bishop c1, bishop e7, bishop d2, bishop takes... Bishop takes, where I can just move my pawn up the board. So yeah, I'm happy that this challenging high rate the opponents actually worked. I managed to get a game quickly. So from now on, every training game that's not arranged is going to be played against somebody 2100 to 2900. Hopefully, uh, players who can crush me every time because they want to practice. But... Yeah, this game went extremely well. I don't know how it's going to end, but I'm really happy that I found knight d5 and that I saw that knight g6 doesn't work. Now, the engine, as I said, may find a deadly blow for black, which could refute my sacrifice, but I don't think it will. Okay, this is good now because uh, he doesn't have... Uh, because he doesn't have bishop e7, so now I can trade off my bishop for sure, and I can trade them off with check. So I think this is the losing move. I think this move is losing, have to be honest, because now bishop c1, if he plays bishop e2, just bishop takes g5 with check. And if he takes my bishop, I'm going to go here. If he plays rook c1, uh, I still take on g5, so now I'm... This is, this is exactly what I wanted. Uh, he doesn't have a way to stop the trade of the bishops, he doesn't have a way to control the c-file. So if he takes my bishop, I take here. Uh, and if he plays rook c8, I'm just going to trade it off. And my knight is... this. If, once we trade these bishops, this is a uh, good knight versus bad bishop textbook. Look at his pawns. All on light squares. The bishop only has one diagonal, which is a bad diagonal, no targets. So. This is the piece I strategically wanted to trade off. So I think I, a king e7, as I mentioned, is a horrible mistake because he wants his bishop on e7 after bishop c1. Now that he did this, well, he obviously can't have played king d7 because knight c5 wins the bishop, but this is, this is strategically lost. Once again, I, I, I could mess it up. I could blunder something, but I hope I won't because strategically this is... A really good game and I think I played a, a great game so far I'm extremely exciting excited to have played this well uh, I don't think I've made too many mistakes Queen g4 worked yes I still could lose but Queen g4 proved to be uh, a good weapon here who what does he do here he doesn't have a good move he 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 all of his moves are horrible Bishop h4 just g3 has to go back to g5 I think this is resignable now. Hmm. I really don't see what he does. I don't see a move for black. F6? Maybe F6 is a move. 
but then I still just take the bishop. He has a potential to create a passed pawn on the e file then. So f6, bishop g5, rook g5, e f6, king f6. Uh, okay, he takes, happy to see that. Rook takes, and now my rook is not under attack. I'm controlling the c file. He has to trade it off, but good knight versus bad bishop. One thing I have to do now is get my king outside before he can threaten bishop a6 again. But I don't want to play uh, knight c5 before it's necessary. Although knight c5 stops that, but I'm just going to play king f1. If bishop a6, just king e1. This is now strategically just winning for, for white, a pawn up and good knight versus bad bishop. My king is obviously marching into the position and taking the a pawn or taking one of these two queenside pawns. I'm not afraid of bishop d3, there are no targets, I'm not afraid of anything. Okay, that's that's one thing he can do. But now I think I am going to play knight c5 to gain a tempo on his bishop to make sure that when I take uh, his pawn is always ampri and that I have this check. Uh, okay. Uh, takes king takes king e2 he can play yeah it's not good knight versus bad bishop because his bishop opens up if i take but i could try not taking because if i don't take his king doesn't have d6 his king doesn't have d7 his king only has d8 and c7 and these two squares so his king would take one two, three moves to get to my knight if he takes and I take. And I have time for this, this, and this. In which case, he would have a passed pawn on d5, a protected passed pawn. So I'm not sure I want to give him that. But if I take on f6, king takes f6, uh, king e2, e5, d takes e5, king takes e5, he has a passed pawn as well, but it's not protected at least. Knight d3, is that a move? I'm looking at knight d3. Uh, he has to play... Oh, knight d3 is a great move. Look at this. Okay, so... Uh, uh, knight d3, bishop a6, pawn takes, king takes, knight e5. If knight d3, pawn takes, knight e5. And then my knight is also a monster, so I'm just going to play that. If he pushes, I'm I'm not worried at all. He has to play bishop a6, and then e takes f, and I'm stopping his pawns. I'm not sure about this decision, but I think knight d3 is a good move. Okay, uh, he doesn't take. Now I gain a tempo uh, because... No, I don't. Because if bishop a6 now, this is not a check. Uh, so I'm going to take first. Am I going to take first? So takes, king takes, knight e5, king f5, king d2, king e4, king c3. Everything is protected. So let's do that. Yeah, he, he, he didn't have enough time to do all that he wanted to do. And I have enough time for this. So king f5, king e4, king d2, king c3, and my king is on c3. I always have the option of playing uh, f3, evicting his king out of the position. And I'm trying to keep his bishop as inactive as possible, which 
obviously if these two pawns are gone then his bishop becomes much better now also this plan is out of the question because my knight is controlling d7 he still only has this diagonal but if i leave no targets on the diagonal it's going to be hard for him to break through so i like my idea of knight d3 and trying to shut his bishop down and once i start moving these pawns uh, it's going to be really tough for him to survive my king on c3 is perfectly placed uh, because he doesn't have an entry point for his bishop so my king is on c3 if bishop a6 i can always go g3 because his king then doesn't have the f4 square it has the e4 square but he has no targets yeah this is winning this is winning he doesn't have a way to break through he can't do anything finally i played a good game and against a high rated opponent sorry for yesterday once again yesterday's game was just atrocious this one was much better okay uh this i don't understand he's trying to do this probably but now my king can get into e3 i'm not sure i want it to be on c3 e3 seems much better i of, her, of course i didn't know i could enter e3 because his king was supposed to be on e4 now but now that i got my king on e3 this should be even better for me My next plan could just be knight d3. If he ever takes, then I'm, I have a passed pawn. So now he cannot trade pieces. Definitely not. If we trade the pieces off, this is an easily winning uh, king and pawn ending because I have an extra pawn on the queen side. And my knight has a lot of lovely jumping to do. In this position although i want to keep it on e5 for a while uh, am i afraid of this g3 takes takes uh pushes then his bishop if he manages to play g3 then he does have a target on g2 so i'm just going to play g3 myself to stop king f4 and to make sure that his bishop doesn't have any targets here and also i can play f3 nothing is stopping me from playing f3 i'm going to take with the h pawn if he takes on g3 if he doesn't take on g3 then should be winning because if if he plays king g5 i'm going to take king h4 and then i'm going to play king f4 and there's no way for him to stop me from winning the g4 pawn yeah so h takes yeah now he has a weakness on g4 as well which is really hard to defend with the bishop uh, so i'm not sure i want to push f3 just yet and i obviously don't want to liquidate too many pawns uh, i'm just going to start pushing my uh, queenside pawns now because once my king gets into f5 no target no target no target no target target uh, does that check mean anything check knight f7 check king f6 knight uh, to d6 no 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 i need to keep my knight over there But can he really stop my pawns with bishop a6? So b4, a b4, a b4. Bishop a6, b4. Uh, b, uh, b5 is impossible, but I have this and this and then. Okay, push my pawns. I have knight f7 check, knight d6 to force uh, a push of the pawn and winning the position. It's winning, it's winning. If he plays bishop a6 here, uh, knight f7 check, knight d6, and I am pushing through with b5. It's over for my opponent, unfortunately for him, uh, because after bishop a6, this uh, 
Yeah, I didn't consider that immediately. So, okay, I'm just going to push my pawn. Because I can also go knight d7, knight c5 and just push my pawn. Yeah, this is game over. He cannot stop my pawn. I think he should have gone to e4 with his king, that way my king would have been less active. Yeah. Uh, do I go check here and here? Knight f7, check king here, knight d6, bishop moves here, attacks my knight with the king, but I attack his bishop. Yeah, this works. This works. Yeah, yeah, my pawn is queening. He would have to give up his bishop to stop it. He should resign now. Yeah. It's funny how my knight is controlling his bishop. You rarely see this. Yeah. If he tries king e7, then just push my pawn and and I have a queen. Yeah. I don't know why he doesn't resign. Yeah. Good. Okay. This was a great game. Uh, I'm going to check it on the analysis board. I'm really. Uh, can't wait to see the move. Uh, okay, queen b6, knight e2. This all I know. This is all theory, in my opinion. And you can see that white is... Well, bishop e7 is a huge mistake because of knight f3. I played a3, g5, queen e3, a5. Castles is correct. Rook g8 is correct. b3 the engine doesn't like. g4, bishop b2, bishop g5. Yeah, it likes my plan now. Knight f8. Oh, I was winning the whole time. Yes! Knight d5. Yes! Okay. Yeah, and the, I think I played a, a perfect game. Wow, okay. And now... Okay, rook c2 also works. Wait. Rook c2 is much better? Yeah, because they don't give up an exchange. Why am I such an idiot? I could have been an exchange up as well, but... Yeah, this is... Uh, and then just... Yeah. And now, bishop c1, best move. Okay, knight c5 now. I'm really happy about this game, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, two good games today, finally. I made up for yesterday. Uh, thanks. Stay tuned for more chess. See you tomorrow.